happen a long, like a lot of times in the Python community or in the you know the computer uh, science community. So it, it means well, it's, it's just JIT, so just in time compiler. So what does that mean? Like just in time? Is it like well, I for example, I, I always work just in time. I'm like just you know just in time to have this presentation ready. But is it, does it mean that way, right? Like, does, does, does it mean that, oh, your code just, like, finished compiling in time? Uh, no, actually, um, so we have to step a little bit back from, like, how computer works, how computer programming works. I know some of you are, you know, expert and maybe, like, know more than me, but just so that everybody is on the same page. Uh, so Python actually does not compile any code. Uh, you know, kind of, like, uh, different from what uh, other... I would say lower level language like C or those like you have to compile the code, right? If Because I learned a little bit of C and C++ when I was in school. Now I can't do any of those. Um, so you have to, I remember you have to like, you know, write your code, you know, in, with the syntax and then you save it as a file. Then you have to compile it before you can run the code. So that's how those programming work. But Python does not work that way. Python does not compile programs uh, by default. Uh, so Python actually is an interpreter. So what Python does is that when Python reads your file, read your .py file, it will uh, interpret it into C code. And you know there's already some compiled C code through the, uh, the, uh, the, the C, Python API, all those stuff, and then it will just run the code that way. So um, why, why do Python do it that way? Uh, there are multiple reasons. I'm not going to dive into it, but uh, what the difference is that when you compile the code, actually, it takes time to compile the code. Um, again, like back in the old days when I have to compile my C code before I can run the program. So it usually takes a while to compile the code. But after compiling the code, the code runs super fast. Right? The, the compiled version actually is already in an even, in, in even lower kind of uh, level of code. So it's like, uh, it's, for example, you compile it to machine code. so you're, a computer chip will already understand that and run that directly, so it's super fast. So uh, back to what is just-in-time compiler. So just-in-time compiler is means that when you run the program, so for example, you run the Python program, but some of them you make them into uh, JIT, right? Like you kind of, uh, when, when it got run, it will see that, oh, actually, wait a second, you have this function, and then you are running it multiple times. How about that, right? How about I compiled it the first time for you? So the second time, the third time, the fourth time, and the rest of it, it will be super fast. So that's the idea. So that's why JIT compiler can really speed up if you have a lot of loops in your code. Um, so it's, number is not the only thing that do JIT compiling. Uh, for example, uh, have you heard of PyPy? Uh, not, not the PyPI, the registry, but like uh, it's another version of Python. It's called PyPy, so they also use the JIT compiler to speed things up. Anyway, I'm not going to too much detail to make it very confusing. Um, you know, uh, we can talk about that after if you're interested about the JIT compiler. So, uh, NumPy is a JIT compiler, but it's specially designed for NumPy. So that's what it says in the beginning, right? Um, so it does those magic things. It see that, oh, you have loops in your program. Your function got used multiple times. It will compile the first time for you and then make it fast. But what makes NumPy different from other JIT compiler is that it's designed for NumPy. So uh, the NumPy thing is supposed to be working very, very well with number, and it is uh, that's why your your code, especially when you're handling data or you are doing uh, scientific programming, is it can be speed up with number. And also, if you have a lot of looping, um, you will see at the exercise that like when we are running code that do a lot of looping, it would actually uh, get some speed up, speeding boosts from number. So uh, some a little bit like basic things about number for those of you who have never used it before. Uh, number have two modes you can do. So <laughs> there's an the object mode and there's a no Python mode. So for the object modes, uh, I would say it's more like loose. It's not that straight. So no Python mode usually are more straight. So the object mode, because object mode will still use Python, ob so it can still handle Python objects. It will still, uh, you know, it, it will still remain the, the, the Python uh, the, the Python API, you know, the C Python API and stuff. So, uh, but the thing is that it's not that fast because all the speed up uh, from the part that we compile the code into low level code and 
and and then this, the you know the second third time uh, we run it is super fast, right? But if we are still hanging on to the Python API, it's still kind of more or less work like Python, right? It doesn't compile anything, so it's not as fast. So what it does is that if you have object mode, uh, it will kind of like be a compromise. So if your code is very you know Python dependent, you have used a lot of Python object that is not supported by the no Python mode. It won't be very fast. It just like do what Python does. But if it sees that you have certain part of your code that can be using the no Python mode to compile to make it fast, then it will do it. So uh, I would say that it's very beginner friendly because you know uh, it's not that straight. You won't run into errors like the no Python mode. Uh, but it will speed it up for you if it want to speed uh, if you if it can speed it up for you. But the downside is that you. If you don't check it all the time, you're not sure that whether your code is really faster or not. So it's a trade-off. So again, no Python mode is the bad and brutter of, uh, of a number. So it's, it's why it's much faster. It does not use the C Python API, not use the C API. is just take that bit that it's compatible, that do a lot of looping. So we take it and then you know restructure the whole kind of uh, the bytecode is how Python execute. Like it will structure that and then make it uh, compile it into some like kind of low level things that can be really fast. So if your your code can be uh, compiled in low Python mode, so it's more promising that it will be fast. Okay. So uh, to use the object mode, the mode that we are using Python, it uh, is the decorator JIT. So just at JIT. Um, so that, that's the object mode. It will, you know, uh, it will fall back into object mode. Uh, if you have object that can't be compiled, then you just run it in object mode. And um, yeah, so sometimes you know, uh, when you're really struggling, you can't make it work with no Python mode. So try it with object mode. Maybe it will work. Um, for ngit, there's another decorator called ngit. So that is using no Python mode. Um, it's actually a shorthand because the JIT, you know, at JIT, the decorator, it actually works for everything. But if you want to use no Python mode, you have to put no Python equals to true, put the setting there. So sometimes, you know, if you have a lot of things, you don't want to type no Python equals to true every time, you can just use NJIT instead. Um, so it's very high performance. Like I said, uh, if it doesn't compile, it doesn't have, well, guaranteed in the sense that I, uh, I, I think I should really uh, make it clearer here that uh, it does not guarantee high performance, but it, it, uh, if it compiles, it guarantees that it's uh, compiled. So uh, sometimes you may not see the, uh, the improvement in speed because of other reasons. Uh, you will see in the exercise later. There may be other reasons that make it like, oh, why is like, it doesn't really like boost the speed. But it guarantees that it's compiled, and you could take advantage of the compilation, uh, possibly. <laughs> so um, if it if it's not supported, you will get an error message from number saying like, oh, sorry, it can't compile in no Python mode. So uh, lots of times when it happens, uh, if you're really, well, I mean, if you really need the performance, you may have to evaluate the code to see like, oh, what part that does not compile, you may have to change how you, your code work a little bit so it co got compiled. But if you just want to make it work, you don't care about the speed, then you can just use JIT and then to hope that it works. <laughs> so. Uh, we will we'll go through those uh, in the exercise as well. So don't worry if it sounds very crazy at the moment. So another thing I want to mention, but we won't dive into it in this uh, kind of beginners friendly tutorial, is that uh, Number also support the, uh, the GPU, the CUDA GPUs. So uh, for example, if you like uh, you, you use GPU because you have a lot of data to handle, speed is very important uh, because you're doing something like deep learning or things like that. Then uh, NumPy may be a, a very good tool that you could try because uh, it's you know already designed to work with a CUDA GPU. Um, so you know sometimes you know, because of uh, like the GPUs like actually work differently. Actually, like each chip works differently. So for for, for the CUDA GPU, sometimes it's like it's uh, you you can't just run Python code like directly. So it need to have a lot of like intermediate steps. So it's not very fast. But uh, with number, it would allow it to be compiled into something that can have direct access. So it will be uh, compatible and it will be fast. But anyway, the details, I won't uh, talk in, you know, I, I won't give you too much detail. 
about it. If you really want to know more, uh, go to the, there's a talk there. The link actually is clickable here. Um, the link for this slide that is in the GitHub repo, so you, you'll find it. <laughs> or you can just search, like, find it in Amsterdam, you know, uh, number. There's, there's a talk by the uh, maintainer, and there will be details there. So, uh, one last thing that is quite important is to have the doc ready before you dive into the exercise. So, uh, this is uh, the, the read the docs, uh, you know, the, the official documentation. So, uh, I'm just reminding you, like, I know it's just, oh, it's just the documentation. Yeah, but I'm reminding you that uh, if you have questions, don't panic. If it doesn't work, don't panic. Check the documentation. Sometimes it helps. Um, but I'm here, so you can also ask me for help as well. I'll be scattering around uh, the room, so, uh, you know, I can help. Uh, I'm thinking, so what do people feel like? Because I, I can actually, I can talk. I thought that I'm going to be coughing like crazy. So, I cannot talk. So maybe, maybe we can go through the first, um, the first notebook together. Do people prefer that, or do you want to work on it by yourself? Silence. We'll do it together. Yeah. Together? Okay. So I will have to get my Jupyter notebook running again. So I may, you know, blacken the screen a little bit. But go to this, uh, go to this uh, link. Get the get all the materials first, and then I will get myself ready, and then we can run the first notebook together. Oh, sorry, I have to go back here. So you will see my very, very messy desktop. Yes, yeah. And my computer is super slow today, so bear with me. If you want to start by yourself, you can start by yourself. Don't, uh, you don't have to wait for me. And, oop. Okay. Yeah, just give me some time. Okay, so, oops. Is it working? Is it not working? Do I have to press any buttons or it will project again? Hmm. Uh, don't think this is the problem. Any technician in the room? No. Okay, oh. let me try. <laughs> Yeah, I plug and plug it in again, but it seems like it's not happy. That it, oh, maybe now it's working. I don't know. Wow. Yeah, it's been Ooh. doing that. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Now. Okay. Sorry about that. I was not planning to. Well, well, I'm kind of like debating whether I should do it, but yeah, not not well prepared. You see, I'm I just prepared just in time. See. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Yeah. Bad jokes, I know. Uh, so if you have downloaded the repo and opened it with Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter Lab, I'm still using Jupyter Notebook. I'm a very simple person. I like being simple, but you can use Jupyter Lab if you want to. Um, it's up to you. So uh, just have them running. <laughs> we'll go for the first one together. There's number two and number three. There are some kind of quizzes inside that all you have to code and figure it out yourself. But these are the solutions. So. Um, don't cheat, don't look at it yet, uh, but when the time when you get stuck, you can look at it. Um, yeah, the, the notebook will guide you, so don't worry. Um, also included a, a tutorial from uh, NumPy, actually, because the last notebook kind of uh, used that, so it may help if you do this first and then kind of understand what it works originally and then work on the, the last one. But anyway, up to you. So let's just go to the first one. Ooh, okay. Scares me a little bit. 
So let's go to the first one. Um, so uh, let's just start from scratch. Uh, I just assume that people may not have number or NumPy, so you can pip install it if you want, but I have already installed it, so I'm not going to run that cell. Um, but yeah, uh, run that cell if you don't have number, or you, you, know, you can just cross out NumPy if you already have NumPy. So that's the main thing we're gonna use. Um, and we are, not, we are not trying it on other things like pandas because NumPy is designed for NumPy. Even though I know that pandas use NumPy as the, the backbone, but it may not work, right? It's, this doesn't guarantee that it will work. So, so let's use NumPy as an example here uh, so before we like, you know, get into too much trouble. So, uh, so yeah, th there may be typo here because you know, it's, it's not, <laughs> so if there are typos, just bear with me, let me know, I'll, I'll fix it uh, in the future. So um, this is the 101 example here. So what we have here is that uh, we have a few functions. It's just doing something very, very simple. It's uh, doing a, uh, a, a t tangent, uh, something, I, I forgot what, what does it call, like the, the tangent of it, some, some kind of math medical calculation. So. Um, so we have here we have the normal one, which like we don't use the we don't use num number we don't use like we just vanilla it's just like what what is it is without the without the speed thing boost. Um, oh, I should not have this here. Yeah, so like I said, it is a lot of typo and stuff. I will fix that in the future. Just bear with me. Um, so this, this one we don't we don't use the JIT. So this one we use the JIT. So um, here you see that. Uh, we have to import the JIT, so uh, because it's a decorator, it's defined inside number, so you have to import it. And then uh, NumPy is net NP, we all know this. Time is just used to time this thing so we can have a comparison. Um, so we have the normal, and then we have the go fast, and then, but why go fast run twice? Uh, reason being that I mentioned before, right, uh, it's, the, it's compiling, so when a uh, number first see the go fast, it will compile it. So it's just in time, right? So it won't do anything until it see it, right? So numbers see that, oh, you want to run go fast, which you use the JIT. So okay, I will compile it. So this is the first time you call it, is the time that when it got compiled. So uh, in theory, right? In theory, this should actually take quite a, a while because it's just doing the compiling. But how does it compare to normal, and how does it compare to the second time? So we got to see that now. So if you run this cell, so it's running, yes. So you, you may have it a little bit different because I'm using a very old MacBook, so yours may be faster if it's a better computer. Um, so you see that, uh, so without the compilation, is this time, right? It's, it's quite fast, right? It's, you know? Um, but with the compilation, it's actually, it takes a long time. So, uh, so now you can ask the question, right? Like if, if this thing, right? If this thing, I only use it once, it may not have a point. Like it, it doesn't make sense to go fast because it's actually not faster because the time to compile actually is quite long compared to no compilation. So again, like number doesn't guarantee that it's just going fast, going fast. It's, going fast because it compiles it. So you have to think that like, if you are not doing a lot of looping, then maybe it's, it's not really helping you. Um, so the second time you can see that, oh, okay, actually you can see it's a magnitude. It's like minus five, there's a magnitude. So, so this is one, two, three. So this is minus uh, four, this is minus five. So it's a magnitude faster with the compilation compared to no compilation. So, so this, so this is just an example to show you that. Um, sorry, Question. typo. Question. Question. Okay, cool. So with the compilation stuff, the way to understand that is like the decorator does the compilation and then runs the body fast. It doesn't like run the body like in some tracing or something. So it so this uh, so this whole function got uh, so this whole go fast function got compiled. Okay. So the first time when a num number sees it that you want to run go fast. So if you if you never call go fast in your in your code, actually nothing happened. But if it's first time, see oh you want to run go fast and it's JIT. So okay, I'll compile that. That's why it's slow. But and then after that, the second time you see how fast this is. So if you run it ten times, then the first time is slow, but then the the, the other nine times is kind of catching up. Context I'm asking this is I've got a function I did use number in, and it takes like five minutes to run even with number. 
Um, I verify that like it actually is running those five minutes are, num are the compiled code, not the Python version first. Ah, I will have to have a look because this is we are just we are just like touching the basic basic. Uh, so so yeah, like your code may be using it depends whether you're using no Python mode or, or object mode. Also, like again, like if you say it's very slow because you have run it let's say 10 times, but maybe the compilation takes even like longer than nine times doesn't catch up or something like that. So we, we can have a look of it like later when we have time. Or maybe when you go through all of these and then the, the mysteries start to like, you know, be cleared up and things like that. So uh, save the question for later and we'll have a look. Yeah, okay. So um, another thing that uh, it's a little bit of like tricky that like I want people to be aware before we moved on is that um, in using NumPy, right? NumPy, the, the vanilla NumPy, uh, a lot of times as a good NumPy user, we would do a lot of vector or array operations. We won't do like loops to loop it like element by element. Uh, I just assume, but like let, let, let's just let's just look at it together, right? Uh, Element-wise operation in NumPy is actually slow because um, NumPy actually got a lot of, you know, the C code that actually boosts the performance because uh, those are written for ar array or uh, vector operations. So, um, so if you if you are using like NumPy not with the vector operations, you are using it maybe not the best way, to, not optimally. So. Um, let's do some experiment to compare those like vector operation and non-vector operations. So uh, we have a huge, well, yeah, we have a huge array here is like quite quite a big one, and uh, we have a uh, an operation here. We're just calculating, you know, like the cosine square and the sine square, you know, uh, plus is is the um, I'm so I'm so bad with all the terms again. Trigonometric, like trigonometric identity. So you know, like the, the triangle. There's like this two sides, and then square equals that that side square, that kind of thing, right? So we're doing that. So uh, this is again, we have a uh, vanilla version. We we are not doing any speed up. So let's see how long does it take. So this time we're using time it. So time it is a uh, is a magic uh, command in uh, Nook, Jupyter Notebook that it will time that cell for you. Uh, so what it does is actually will run it multiple times and give you a average. So, um, so yeah, just just to be aware of that uh, for now. You will see why we do it this way. So, let's run this and have a look. Yeah, you see the time time itself take quite a while to load because uh, Jupyter Notebook is doing some experiment and they like run it for multiple times for seven runs, for example, in this case, and then. If you report a uh, average with the standard deviation for you. So we say, okay, so this is how long it takes if we're using it as a vector. So we use NumPy operations, we use the cosine operation and the sine operation. So I'm treating this array, so this array will be the x ray. So this array as a vector. So this is uh, how long it takes. So let's compare it to doing things element by element. So see how long it takes. Actually, Let's not run it because it's very, very slow. Uh, you can run it at home. It actually take quite like a few minutes to run. Or we can run it and move on and look at it because it, it just take quite a while. <laughs> it's 10 times lower. That's, that's how I try it at home. It's like 10 times lower. If you don't trust me, you can, if you have time, you can try it. Um, but yeah, like it's, remember this style already take, take a while to run and then this one is 10 times lower. It will take a few minutes, so let's ignore it for now. Um, so. Or we may have to stop it <laughs> to, to move on. Yeah, don't worry about this. Let's, let's stop it. You can run it later. Just trust me, it's 10 times slower. Okay, so now let's, let's do it with JIT. So, okay, so with JIT, and we are, again, like you're just reminding you, you can use NJIT uh, instead of JIT, no, no Python <coughs> equals the true, but it's up to you. They're the same. Uh, you, you just, you know, uh, choose whatever you prefer. So now we're doing exactly the same thing, but this time we are compiling them. So import the decorator and then you know run the now I add the engine at the end so I know what this is. But before I time it, I would compile it first because I want to see the performance after the compilation. 
because again, the compilation will make it. Uh, so, what, it depends. Because sometimes you want. I really want to know if I do it ten times, like how long does it take, right? So yes, yes. Then you include the compilation, but. If uh, now I'm just like doing the performance, I would prefer to compile it first, and then I would see uh, the the time it. How long does it take? So um, so now we see that it's like 248 milliseconds. So it's quite fast compared to this one, which is like 461. So it's uh, it's like half the time ish. It's quite fast, but it's not as good as this. Um, there's the speed up that we have when we do this element-wise operation. Because again, remember that number is really good with looping. So when we have the loop, so originally this thing is super slow and it's like you should never, never do it. But now, but because like for some reason, right, you, you may have to do it, um, then uh, the num number can help you. So let's see. So this one, it's... It's almost the same time as this uh, this operation, the, the the one with the uh, vectorized operation. So you see, um, the four is ten times lower. I, I don't even like have the time to run it. You know, it's like very very slow. But now you see that these two are actually more or less the same time. It's even faster this one, two two three ms. Uh, well, there there's a standard deviation there, so maybe maybe uh, let's say more or less the same. So. With number, actually, the element-wise operation and the vector operation become more or less the same time. So you can, you may be able to take advantage of it if you have like a lot of loop. If you can't do vector operation, you can only do element-wise operation. So this is time that number may be able to help you. But it does seem that um, the vector, the plain vanilla vectorized numpy, is roughly the same speed as the number. So you mean the compile one, the vector, compile vector, and the vanilla vector? Yeah, or, or either the either the number versions. Oh, these 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 two versions, these two number versions. So what's the speed of the vectorized plain vanilla and numpy? It's uh, four hundred sixty-one. Uh, but but there, there's a quite a, a huge standard deviation. Uh, so so like I would say marginally maybe half the time or maybe like one third faster. Yeah. yeah. So it's not a lot of speed boots because the vectorized operation is already very optimized by NumPy itself. So, uh, so, so that's why, like, uh, you may find that oh, why NumPy doesn't really help me to go very fast. Yeah. That may be why, you know, because uh, you you may be like, you know, you say it would be a little bit faster, but still, you know, it, you, you may not see a difference because it's already optimized. That's why. Um, so another thing that Num uh, NumPy may help you. Is that uh, there's this this very very like uh, I mean uh, very uh, techy thing right like there's this compilers so I was like oh what, what 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 does it mean so I look it up you can also have a look up of it in Wikipedia it just means that um, when people designing the chips and have these like operations uh, very very low level machine code operations there are certain things uh, certain com compilers they have to follow to make sure that um, the precision is Achieve so no, you know if you you say the precision is that is like definitely that no precision will be lost because of the the arithmetic operation. But that thing actually would uh, sometimes make your code quite slow because it has to follow that compilers. It has to follow that order. So uh, number provides something called fast math, which means that if you don't care that much about the precision, again like. If you are calculating the rocket to the moon, of course, it needs to be very, very precise. But if you're handling the data that actually the precision is not the most important thing, or you just want to quickly get an idea and maybe some kind of quick uh, POC, a quick uh, uh, graph to present just a rough idea, you don't need to have that precision. So fast math may be able to help you uh, in that case. So, uh, so Again, we're doing some comparison here and to see, you know, the magic. So now we have two. Uh, one is like not doing fast math. They are both using the no Python, you know, the ngit mo, which is already fast. But uh, so we are just trying to see the difference between the f uh, with fast math or no fast math here. So uh, let's let's run it and see. 
So again, we have to compile them because like the compilation, I, um, let's not care about that too much here. Let's look at the compiled version, the difference between them. So you can see that uh, the do some fast, actually very interesting because the do some fast uh, is, it got a little bit like maybe uh, a few percent performance improved, but it's quite consistent. The, the standard user is quite slow, uh, it's quite low. So, um, so this example is a bit silly, just like adding, oh, adding the square root and things. But imagine if you have a lot of data, if you're doing more complicated things, that, that may actually help you a little bit. So uh, almost half the time, wow, the experiment I did was really good. <laughs> so maybe it's not always half the time. So maybe let's try it again, maybe. maybe you know, it's a very bad conclusion that I draw there. Yeah, it's not, not half the time. Anyway, uh, it is faster for sure, uh, but you know maybe not that not that not half the time. So um, yeah, okay, this is questionable. I would, I'll make a question mark here, so I would I would uh, be better next time. So multiple crawl. So this is a thing that uh, I have been looking into recently. I've just given a talk last week about using the no Gu Python, which also trying to uh, trying to make use of multiple core, but I won't go into the detail there, that's like another talk, so it's not here. But um, the idea is more or less the same, is that nowadays, most computer, well, even my old laptop, right, like 2015, you can see how old it is, it's, uh, it's still do core. So I'm sure that you have computer now that's like quad core or egg core that's like core that's like common, it's not rare, it's not like you have to go to the laboratory to find that. So. Uh, in number, actually provide you the option to go parallel, which uh, means that it will make use of multiple cores, right? Uh, so compared to Python, in Python, you know, vanilla Python, we have the, the uh, global interpreter log, the queue, so it needs to be single-threaded. I think NumPy, because NumPy use some C code and stuff, so it may already be a little bit optimized. But just in case, you know, uh, number also give you the option to do the uh, parallel use of multiple cores. So again, let's run it. So to see, why is it? It's, it's so weird. Why is it so 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 long? It's so different from what I do like when I was at home. So uh, you can see that it's like ninety five point three uh, milliseconds. So this is running the uh, the the the, the uh, trigonometry thing, right? So let's look back into the vanilla trigonometry, how long does it take? So, is, is it here? No, yes. One second, let me find it. <coughs> so it's here. <coughs> how much faster? So it's like 461, so that's 95. It's quite fast, actually. <coughs> if you look at the JIT version without parallel, it's 148 compared to 95. So, hmm. It's, it's good. So if you have a better computer than me, it's maybe even faster. So. Yeah, so I think that that's, that's like as far as my flow can let me go, so. I will, unfortunately, I will have to let you finish the second and the third one by yourself. Um, so in the second one, we'll do some like have troubleshooting, debugging things. So if you have a function that doesn't compile, what should we do? Uh, I hope that um, notebook will help you to find the right, you know, to, to be more confident to troubleshoot next time when it happens to you. And uh, the third one is just that we are trying it on the NumPy uh, tutorial in the NumPy website to uh, to plot some factors to make it, uh, to use number to see if we can make it faster. So um, I think just, just, just work on it and let me know if you have questions. I have to um, rest now for my float, so thank you.